All right, everybody, welcome back to the character review portion of the podcast. Uh, with me, as always, as no one has no one has abandoned me except for Jared, who did abandon us. Uh, we got Fred, Brad, and Brandon again, here again, reviewing here. Heimdall the All Seeing. So, Heimdall the All Seeing is a three threat character with six health on his healthy side. Uh, defenses are threes across the board. Uh, two attacks, both range two. The first uh, is a sh- range two strike that's five dice. That gains power equal to the damage de- dealt. Uh, the second uh, would be his spender. For three power, he gets a seven dice range two uh, attack. That if the attack deals damage after the attacker is all the character may push. This character may push target character away medium. Uh, very important that there's no size restriction on that, so we can push any character away medium, which is uh, really Huge. strong. Yeah, that's that's uh, really really good. Uh, the range two is kind of the I guess the restrictive part of that. I mean, if it was range three, it would be uh, probably busted. And then you have uh, for we have a one superpower uh, and then two reactive superpowers for the regular superpower. We have Guardian of the Bifrost for three power. This character, this character, or another allied character within four, and place it within two of its current position. And you can only place one character with that once per turn. Uh, no, character each character is- can only be placed once. Yeah, that's what I said. I just confused a word there. Uh, that's- okay. So the cool thing about that is you can move multiple characters uh, yes. within two of their thing, and you so it's not with just once per turn. Uh, the superpower can only be used once per turn, and a character can only be placed once per turn, which is really strong. Uh, and we have all seeing eyes. The first reactive superpower for two power reads: When an allied character within three is attacking, defending, or dodging during the modified dice step, this character may use the superpower. The allied character may re-roll up to two of its own dice. Alternatively, when an allied character is within three rolls dice for a crisis card or team tactics card, this character may use the superpower. The allied character may roll, re-roll up to two of its own dice. Um, seems interesting. I like, I like that, that uh, for, for the, the crisis, crisis card. card. Is this, this the, the first time we've been able to re-roll dice for a crisis? Yeah, I, I think it is, and... Having just recently played a game of uh, of Alien Core, that is is good. so good. That is so good. Especially oh my! Asgard giving Angela some rerolls to grab the core and then boots could move you away from everything. Uh, also, while we're talking about Asgard, likes to play the page of flips because they all get an extra power anyway. And so rerolling dice for that's great too. Yeah, and then where he can just kind of give out rerolls is uh, pretty good. Then we have Forfend for two powers, another reactive superpower. When an enemy character ends a movement within two of this character, this character may use this superpower immediately, makes a strike attack against the enemy character. This superpower can only be used once per turn. Um, also, really good. He's very per. Kind of he's got that protective mentality. A lot of stuff going on on this card. He's got a got a lot of defense, a lot of protecting himself, a lot of helping out. This the Heimdall's doing a lot here. Um, he's and, also and all of this, oh, oh, good, all man. of this in a in a three cost package. Yeah, for three threat, um, he is size two. He does move medium, so he's not even moving small, um, which is. My biggest beef with like any character in this game, if you haven't caught on that by now. Um, he does not have any changes on the backside. He goes down from 6 health to 5 health. Um, he is as Guardian, so he's going to gain an extra power during the power phase. Um, all right, uh, Brad, what are your initial thoughts on how do we all see? Oh, uh, I love that you started with me because I was going to, <laughs> I'd already decided that I was going to be the one that said that he isn't as good. Uh, I he is great because Jared never starts with you. All right, that's why I he is great. He's great, except he's never gonna have the power you need to do all the things you want to do with him. Uh, range two strike means that he will mostly getting be getting power from getting hit, not hitting people. Yeah. 
And uh, so you'll get to do a little bit each turn, and that little bit will be good. But he will not get to do all this stuff. I think they play really well on cubes now. Uh, and getting you know Heimdall with a cube and getting three power a turn um, really opens up. Because I'm not sure you need to do all of this on every turn. Um, I, I don't know how up front he's going to be um, to need the forfin or really to attack. Um, I, I, I think every time I look at this character, I really want to be using All-Seeing Eyes and Guardian of the Bifrost. I want to be moving Thor around so he can make two attack actions a turn. Moving but I don't, I don't even think you can do both of those each turn. You'll have to pick one or the other. Yeah, I, I, I think the way I anticipate playing him is moving him around with the Guardian of the Bifrost. And, you know, if he gets into the scrum... Uh, then I'll, I, if he's in the scrum, he's going to probably have enough power. Because uh, five dice on a builder, you're probably, you know, I think you're, what, average is going to be one to two successes that get through. Um, so that gives you that five power a turn if you're playing, you know, cubes or something of that nature. I do think, uh, I do, I get what you're saying. I think the power economy is definitely going to be a little bit restrictive. Yeah. We've seen this before. Um but I think having those options, especially once he flips, I mean, if he flips and he has eight power. Uh, oh, yeah, you're happy for a while. Yeah, and honestly, I think you're happy for pretty well the rest of the game because I don't think, I think people are going to start playing around it. Then you can start using your all-seeing eyes and forfend more than you need to use Guardian of the Bifrost. And if you're playing a scenario where you don't have to Guardian the Bifrost, uh, being able to all-seeing eyes or forfend every turn uh, seems really good. Fred, what do you what do you think? Do you, are you you more uh, with Happy Go Lucky Brandon, or are you more with Debbie Downer Brad over here? I uh, want I'm... to also reiterate. I think he's good. I just don't think that he's going to do all those things. I, I, I'm with Happy Go Lucky Brandon. If I'm to be <laughs> perfect. <laughs> uh, uh, th- okay, so uh, do you know how I see this? This is a toolbox that's sitting in your list that uh, uh, you only have so many hands that you can do work with and that's the amount of power he gets but you may need a hammer and so you grab that hammer and you use it and you may need a saw so you grab that saw and you use it Uh, that is what he is he is like a a, a bunch of different uses that is that are all good in your list I look at this card and I want to I want to use this guy in in not even uh, uh, as guardian lists, like a, a a lot of this stuff is just universally useful. This is, I'm I'm very happy with this model. I I I I will be buying this model when he comes out, and I will be using him in even non as guardian lists. Fred, I'm I think, Fred. I think that's pretty much going right along with what I'm advocating. Is you're gonna have to pick and choose what you do with him. I, I and I agree with you, and and I also agree with you that uh, he's not gonna be able to do everything on his card every turn. Uh, but I mean that doesn't change the fact that he's got a lot of good stuff on his card, and a lot of it I'm going to be excited to use. He is options. The model. His model is he. He is someone who gives you the ability to be more flexible with how you play the game and that is valuable well, it's, it's also really I, exciting because if you need a character if you need that movement shenanigans like you can dedicate him to that but he does other things so you're not feeling like you're wasting a spot on like because like lockjaw is one of the other characters that does that and lockjaw has seen a, a decent amount of play with just being able to do that heimdall hits pretty good and he also does a yeah. lot of other stuff. So, and and can we also talk about uh, one uh, this uh, the ability to to re-roll rolls that you make for crisis cards? That is really good. That uh, that can change the course of a game absolutely. Yeah, getting, if, getting the last activation if you don't. Because, like, every time I read that, all I want to do is have the last activation and pay. Don't don't try to get, like, the core with Heimdall. Keep his power 
and then you know activate an Angela last, and then getting to re-roll those dice to give her two attempts, uh, giving her two attempts because I would rather her have that Kree core than Heimdall. Uh, I think that's huge. I do. I, I'm I'm with you on that, Fred. I think that's going to be, I think that's going to come up a lot, uh, and I think it's going to be huge. Same thing with the dodging. Uh, having that re-roll count for dodge rolls. Uh, is also something that's not common, I don't believe. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it is not, re-rolling it is not, is not very common. Yeah, so having that is going to be uh, pretty pretty enticing, especially in its two. So it's not just one. Um, so being able to re-roll two was seemingly uh, specific for the crisis card portion. Because uh, I think all the yeah. crises are mostly two. Uh, I don't think there's any that are one, is there? There is. Sword one, base. Sword's one, right? Okay. Yeah. I knew there was one, and I actually think Asgard is great on 14 now uh, with pay to flips for sword. Uh, I think that's mm-hmm. something they're definitely really going to want to play, uh, but we'll get to that later in the uh, review here. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't I'm, – there's not, nothing a whole lot. There's not, you know – Anything I would have rather had. Um, two physical attacks is, again, physical is by far the most popular attack in the game. He's got uh, straight line defenses, which is pretty consistent on three point models. Uh, the six and five health is very consistent with uh, three point models. Um, cool art on both of these cards, which is pretty ex- exciting. Uh, no real downsides, uh, nothing, the no real drawback. Uh, you don't have a crazy expensive spender that makes no sense. Uh, all of the abilities are very useful. You don't have a small move. Um, it's just it's just so crazy getting super giant as a three point model and then getting Heimdall uh, as a three point. I thought model. you were just gonna. I thought you were just going to subtweet her the entire uh, time. No, and not I, I, actually I, I, I thought about it, and I was, it, it's, just, it's just crazy to me that you have these two models come out a month apart, and one is just absolutely... <sighs> Listen, I just don't know how in production they looked at these two models and like, yep, these are the same threat level model, and they should be the exact... Like, well, uh, I think that one of them is in Black Order and one of them is in Asgard. I think that that's where <laughs> that, that has came. a lot to do with it. Yeah, I think that that's what it is. And and uh, the, uh, this guy they were like, is As- Asgard needs a playable model and Black Order doesn't. Is uh... yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, mean, right, I think I think I think you nailed. Yeah, I guess that's. I mean, I, and that that may have been part of it. It's like we need to, we want to put out this model, but we don't want it to be busted. Uh, Asgard needs playable models. Let's give them a good one. Uh, it's just it just feels like we're so we're on a roller coaster recently of releases. It's like from the Shadowland Daredevil was like we got a great Shadowland Daredevil, we got a really good Nick Fury, and then it's like here's Electra, she's a pile of dog turns, and then it's like. I had, nothing came out between them and Supergiant, right? Well, Black Swan. Yeah, but... Black Swan. Yeah, and then we get Black Swan. He's really good. And then he's like, oh, here's a big pile of poop. And uh, that's like my biggest fear with Malekith. Um, uh, is so with this release, we're gonna get Heimdall and Skirts, and we get uh, Malekith, which I'm gonna bring up now because this model is gorgeous. Look at it in all its glory. Yeah. This guy is so. This is the cool. This model rocks. I want to play this. It looks like a Age of Sigmar model. It does, but Age of Sigmar <laughs> is pretty sweet. And... Yeah, and you're you're saying that as it's as if it's a negative. That is, this thing is cool. Yeah, and if you play Age of Sigmar, get this model and play it in Age of Sigmar. <laughs> so. But it's it is a fifty five dollar solo pack model, um, so you're definitely you're getting a fifty five dollar model. It looks like so this model looks like it's going to be really big and is freaking awesome. Um, I'm just really scared that with the convinced that we're going to get a really bad one, um, and then we've got we'll bring up Heimdall and all his glory. So also a really sweet model. I really love. Uh, um, I guess it's the Bifrost going around him. Yeah. So I really like that. And they, him and Scourge both have a very 
I mean, most Asgardians do, but I really like the, they've really incorporated like the Viking look on them. Um, yeah. Gave them both. I, I do like that they did with both of them. Uh, both of those models are cool. We'll, Scourge is right here, but we'll show him off later. Um, this box does include two team tactics cards. Meet my executioner and weapons of Midgard. Uh, we have yet to see what those are. Um, They're both so Scourge cards. They both could be Scourge cards. Uh, Meet my executioner could be a Heimdall and Scourge card where Heimdall teleports Scourge. Um, that is my... If that's my guess. Oh, no. I doubt it's Heimdall. It could be it's, Hela. It'd be right. Hela. Yeah. I bet it is an Electra. I mean, not Electra. Oh, Enchantress. Okay. Yeah, Electra card. Yeah. It's not an Electra I bet card. You, I bet you it's an Enchantress Scourge card. Yeah, that'd be, that'd okay. be sweet. I like that. I like that idea. Is it kind of on the teleport side or just kind of the... Teleport would work, but I bet it's something with Enchantress and Scourge because they work together all the time in the comics. Yeah. Okay. So I, I like that. I like the idea of that, especially if it's a hero. I'm, I'm kind of. I guess I'm just hoping it's a heroes to hire, like a heroes to hire like card, where uh, in reality it could be. Yeah. Or an additional attack or something cool. Uh, there's a lot of cool things, so hopefully we'll go over those as soon as those get spoiled. Uh, you get the and weapons of Midgard is probably a ranged attack for Scourge. Yeah, I would uh, also uh, we I would agree with that. It looks like they're both on small bases, so you'll get your two bases, attack cards, two tactics cards, one Scourge and Heimdall miniature. This pack will be thirty nine ninety nine, released in Q three. I do believe, as mentioned previously, that it I, I believe the set release date is the eighth or the fifteenth of July. Um, so hopefully we'll get Heimdall and Scourge, as well as Malekith um, for those releases. Uh, and Malekith all kinds of stuff. Tokens. His own tokens. Uh, but back to Heimdall. Yeah, I think I think Heimdall is really good. I think the model's sweet. I think it's getting all. There's a lot of cool things you can probably do with that model. I I think I guess I would. You know, if there's something I would. You know, one added kind of wish they were he was on like a medium base, but I mean, I, I mean, we can wa we can wish for so many things. Uh, he's yeah. he's got a lot going on, yeah, yeah. Ask yes. for more, but you know, I, I don't have any complaints with this model. Uh, I think everything is fairly costed. Uh, I think this was a very well done model. Um, you could say that for on his uh, spender that it's probably sh that maybe should have been a wild trigger. Um, either one. I mean, I guess it's, there's some drawbacks. It's not an auto push, uh, but with seven dice, uh, I mean, here, hopefully getting a damage, so you're probably feeling pretty bad. So, all right. So yeah. Anything, else? Got anything they want to chime in on Heimdall? I I don't. I, I don't know if there's I I I can't just say this guy's great by him. <laughs> the, he's everything on here. I like I like this I like where we're at with this guy in 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 the game. This is and a, this pack though, I think even if you don't play Asgard, I think this pack is probably something worth buying to have both. These I agree. Models. I think both these models are going to fit in. Um, we can kind of segue this into the ratings and um, scoring section. I I believe that both these models are very splashable. Um, Oh, oh we're, let's talk race. about just just time doll for now. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's the same for buying the pack. I think this is definitely a pack that's you know worth picking up just for that. I mean, he, he alone is very worth splashing. So I think it's. Uh, but I'll let you. I'll let you go. I didn't mean to cut you off there, Fred. Oh no, you're good. Uh, so are we going into our rating section? Are we rating this boy? Yeah. Let's, Brad. You got anything else you want to say about Heimdall before any last? Request since you're the, the only thing anything negative about him. The only thing I have to say further about Heimdall is I give him a B plus. B plus. All right. I was gonna let uh, Fred go first, but all right, you can go ahead. <laughs> no, that's fine. Uh, the uh, I I I think that. Any semblance of a disagreement between Brad and I is is just 
next to nothing. We are inches apart because I'm giving, uh, yeah, I'm giving him an A minus. So, uh, and and because th- this is great, every uh, and he's three points too. Uh, I am I'm over the moon for this. I'm over the rainbow bridge for this guy. I, yeah, I, I'm with you. I think uh, in Portland, we know that he's we know he's Asgard. Uh, I, I I don't know if you play Asgard without him. Um, I think he's that good of a model. I think he hits hard enough. Uh, I am curious. I'm a little wary of just the range two attacks. I'm not sure how much he really wants to be up in the mix, but the, the with four fin, he can be that beat stick. I mean, every turn there's turns where you can attack twice. And have four power, and then get to counter attack twice, um, which is super good. Well, um, well, um, only it's only once per per round, right? Once per turn. Turn. Once per turn. Yeah, oh, it's he's, he's turn. even better. Yeah, he's even better. <laughs> so Each bad guy that walks in, you can do it. Yeah, so he can, you know, he can hold down a point, and you try to come take it. He's gonna whack you. Wah, wah. And you know, it's it's one of those where it's I I, I like him a lot. Um, I, I think he's very splashable. Uh, I think there are a lot of affiliations that can use the Guardian of the Bifrost ability. I think there are a lot of affiliations that want all-seeing eyes. I think there are a lot of affiliations that want Forfend. I think these are all three very different abilities that a lot of affiliations can use. Um, as Fred can say, playing uh, with Criminal Syndicate, I, I'm going to try him in Criminal Syndicate. I really like the idea of being able to just hold down a point and when someone tries to come take it from you, he can just hit him. And he can hit him again. Yeah. Uh, giving them advantages of reroll dice for Crisis and Team Tactics cards and dodges. Uh, I play Criminal Syndicate a lot different than Fred does. I do not like to attack people. Um, so being able to have someone in my list that can hold down a point and allow me to reroll dice uh, is something... Um, I think deserves a little bit of credit. I, I'm going to give him a solid A. Um, I'll be the high, high, high giver on this. I'm really high on Heimdall. Um, I'm really high on this box in general. I think they do a lot of really good things. Um, I the A is I, I'm optimistically cautious because I do the two the range two attacks um, could become kind of problematic. You kind of want to throw him in the mix but I, I think if you can stay away from doing that and just use his abilities i think that's oh yeah and being able to move kingpin up yeah i'm oh yeah uh, it's chef's kiss it, it, the more you think about him the more you can think of situations where he's gonna come in very handy yeah oh yeah and i'm definitely just like laying my my next segment on the our list segment i've pretty much blew my load on that one i guess uh Everyone knows what that <laughs> list is going to be. So, um, But before we get to that, uh, let's go into our comic section. Uh, Brad, what do you got for us today? Oh, I've got three suggestions for Heimdall. Um, i got it right here. The first one is uh, Journey into Mystery. Uh, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Mike off. Uh, actually, before I talk about this story... Um, Stan Lee's very famous, um, mostly off the back of Jack Kirby. But I want to tell a quick Jack Kirby story in case people have not heard about it. And if you've seen, what was that? Um, uh, God, what's his name? He played Batman in the Justice League movie. My uh, uh, Affleck? Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. My the God. Ben Affleck movie where they go to Iraq and rescue those. Uh, it, it's Argo. 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 If you've seen it's Argo, Iran. if you've seen Argo, you've seen someone play Jack Kirby. Uh, when they were doing that fake movie to get those people out of Iraq, uh, or was Iran. it Iran? Sorry, yeah, it's Iran. Iran. Uh, they went to Jack Kirby and he did the. Um, like the fake poster and the storyboards and stuff for that fake movie, uh, which is really neat. Anyway, Jack Kirby, awesome guy. Um, but Journey Through Mystery 104, uh, Thor decides to appoint someone as the guard of the Rainbow Bridge. And this is how Heimdall got the job. So he interviews and he nails the interview and 
of course, starts guarding the bridge. But um, so that one takes place in the far, far past. Uh, next one is Thor 351. This is by Walter Simonson, who wrote and drew it. Um, you might remember him from his entire run is what I told you to read for Thor. Um, so <laughs> uh, in 351, Heimdall is the last line of defense uh, against Surtur, who's coming to destroy uh, all of Asgard. So it's Heimdall versus Surtur. Uh, and then the final suggestion I have is a comic called Angela, Asgard's Assassin. It's number three. And Kieran Gillen, Marguerite Bennett, Phil Jimenez, and Stephanie Hans all worked on this book. And Heimdall is engaged to marry someone. And this marriage it will um, give the Asgardians some new allies. Uh, but things don't go as well as they hoped for this whole marriage thing. So, um, if you want to see Heimdall get buried, uh, that one's for you. So, those did are my suggestions. Say, did you say with that last one that it had Karen Gillen as one of the... No, 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 not Karen Gillen. Kieran Gillen. Okay, uh, okay. He's... He is very bad about her being a famous star, though, because their <laughs> names are very similar. Their names <laughs> are very similar. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I don't know what he looks like, but she's hot. So. <laughs> uh, that is. They're they're basically twins. They look so much alike. Hey, then he's hot no. too. So no, no, they don't look anything alike. All right, so now Fred, you're up, buddy. I, I, what are we not I'm, sharing my list? Well, we, we, we can the get, list section. We're gonna do that after Fred. I'm gonna give Fred some. Oh, okay. Here, all right. The the thing right. is, go ahead, Fred. Everybody forgets about the list, and I'm the only one with a list. And I have a list. I, I I I know I know, and I'm I'm ha I'm very proud of you. You know what? I, I am. I'm proud of you. Someone else actually brought a list. Fred, you bring a list. Nope, right, I'm a buddy. piece of shit. <laughs> All right, buddy, you go ahead and take off, take over here. Uh, we'll put you on the pedestal, and you can uh, have your however long you need minutes of fame. Okay, well, uh, this is this is my non sequitur recommendation. So, um, this uh, the character of Heimdall is played famously by Idris Elba in the MCU, and. Uh, my, uh, this is a little bit of backstory about me. I have a cat whose name is Idris. My God. And she was given that name by my mother, who, who at the time that she got this cat, she was watching a British procedural crime drama called Luther, uh, which is one of the early roles that was played by Idris Elba. So my cat is named after Idris Elba. The reason I bring this up is because I am bringing a British procedural crime drama, uh, and it's one that is not Luther. It is called Broadchurch. Ooh, this is that's a good one. It is a good one. This is a good. This show is really good. Uh, I I remember I sat down and started watching this show. I believe that I was watching it on Netflix, but I don't know where you can find it right now. Uh, and I was hooked very quickly, and I binged the entire thing. Uh, this is a show that has a a former doctor and a will soon become the doctor uh, actor. And it's on Amazon Prime, by the way. It is on Amazon Prime. Okay, uh, and I can tell you right now, this show will keep you captivated for the entire run. It's a great show. Highly recommend. It is very uh, good. I'm glad that I've got someone in my corner for once. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to be the end of my uh, non sequitur recommendation. Mike on. So you go ahead now, Brandon. All right. Keep us moving forward. All right. I'm going to take over here. I'm going to do my list first, uh, which is basically really similar. Uh, this is going to be my traditional criminal syndicate list. Uh, that's my win-loss record. I don't I haven't played that many games since I last updated it. 
Um, honestly, uh, it's it's kind of iffy because I, I don't like to play more than three unaffiliated models. Um, I have Lizard, Black Dwarf, and Black Widow as my unaffiliated with Hood, Shadowland, Daredevil, Omega Red, Mysterio, Kingpin, Bullseye, and Black Cat to round off the ten. Um, Kingpin is always the leader. Uh, this list is not set up to switch to Shadowland Devil. It's not set up to play Shadowland Daredevil as the leader. Um, in some Merry Christmas fantasy land that Heimdall was uh, affiliated with Criminal Syndicate, he would be perfect. But in this list, I am probably going to replace Two Point Black Widow uh, with Three Point Heimdall as my first test. Uh, it's real hard for me to replace Lizard or Black Dwarf. Um, I also really like Heimdall with Black Dwarf. Um, yeah. That's neither here nor there. Um, I really like him a lot with Omega Red. He fits in really well with Kingpin. Um, just that little lineup. And then, yeah, play um, play it as just Criminal Syndicate. Squeeze them in as one of your three unaffiliated models and live your best life. I think it's a really good place for them. And uh, I will be trying it out. So, uh, Yeah, I think that... Uh... Heimdall goes real great with these thick boys. Yeah, I, I do. I agree. I think he does a lot of really good things in allowing them to reroll dice. I mean, keeping Kingpin alive is kind of the key. Uh, keeping characters healthy. I mean, there are games, uh, and I think Heimdall is really going to be able to step up in the first couple, couple of turns. If he can keep a couple characters healthy and give you those extra points, points I, think I think you can really squeak out some victories. victories. Um just with um, those all-seeing eyes that he's got. All right, Brad. What's the list? What you got? What you bring for okay. us today? Okay. Right. I'm going way out in the left field here. Right, you okay. should play Heimdall with Asgardians. Thor, <laughs> Angela, Valkyrie, Executioner. Executioner? Yeah, Scourge, the Executioner. Oh, okay. <laughs> I also do have an Asgard uh, A-Force hybrid list uh, with Angela, Enchantress, Loki, Thor, Valkyrie, Winter Soldier, Okoye, Heimdall, Scourge, and She-Hulk, because having a Hulk is never a bad thing. Fact. Fact. So, yeah, but Heimdall... I, I am also... Kind of back to the ratings. We didn't, I didn't go too much in depth because I, I think he's a slam dunk in Asgardians. I, I'm not sure you. Sh I think you start every list with him if you're playing them. I think you start with Thor and Heimdall, um, and then you kind of move on from there if you want, you know, your Valkyrie and Scourge, if you want Enchantress Angela. But I think you're always building off that eight point core of Heimdall and Thor. At least the Thor we have now. I think that's. Yeah, I live in the world I live in. Is every when I play this list, I am, I don't think I will ever not play Heimdall. Um, I, I just he's he's I think he's that good. I don't know if he's gonna fall out of. I don't think you would. I don't think you're gonna play a game with him and be like, ah, you know what? I just don't <coughs> think he was the right pick. I, I don't I don't feel like that's a feeling you'll have with him, especially in a limited roster like Asgard. All right. Well, I think that about uh, sums it up. Heimdall's uh, really good. Uh, Three-point model. Uh, I think he's really good. I think... Uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb here. I think uh, we could see we could live in a world where Heimdall might be considered the best three point model. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, I I don't know if I agree, but I do think that he's way up there in in that roster. Uh, I, it would be a limb I this if everybody agreed. <laughs> Fair. This is top five um, for sure. This is certainly one of our episodes where there's not a great deal of acrimony between us. <laughs> yeah, this is this is me, you know, being super over the top over a model like uh, Jared was over uh, Black Swan. Like Fred uh, was over Black Swan. I was for some reason I was expecting you to say super giant there, oh, which would have been really funny. 
I definitely, that's the first one that came to my mind, and I was like, that's not right. That's the bad one. <laughs> that, is not at all the, that is not at all the correct option there. So, <laughs> but, This was fun. Yeah, it was, it was a good time. Uh, thanks for joining us. If you have any recommendations, um, definitely leave us a comment. Let us know. Um, check out our podcast, available on all streaming services uh, that podcasts are normally found on. Um, if you have any, we've got a couple new models coming up. So if you do have another model you really want to see, leave us a comment. We will get to it. Um, we've, we're, we got a little bit, probably got a little bit of line, but as soon as we get caught up and you know, they slow down on releases, we will get to those recommendations, but we want to know your thoughts. Do you agree with, uh, do you agree with me? Come you want to come sit on this limb with me or, uh, you know, are you pumping the brakes a little bit? So, um, Check us out. We're glad to have you, and uh, you guys have a great day and a, a good gaming. Have a good game. Have fun out there. <laughs>